and says art has a, a way of getting ahead of general discourse because it can convey information in novel ways. Speakers, to tell us a bit about what you think about this. I've actually crowdfunded to create my first musical, um, which is called Snowflakes and SoCal, and it's a gently satirical take on um, liberal climate activists in the West Coast of the United States and how they navigate discovering that their beloved social media technology that they're using towards the end of this decade is actually the main cause of the climate change that they're fighting against. Um, so we crowdfunded it just before COVID. Unfortunately, it's delayed production, but I'm really pleased to announce that on this the occasion of this event tonight, I'm restarting development of the show. And uh, I'm really excited to learn a lot from other creatives trying to impact um, the discussion on, on climate change uh, in the arts. It's how we communicate uh, things that relate to science. Uh, a lot of people simply don't have the background or the interest. And that's why I connected the two, sustainability and the arts, uh, as a way of getting through to people, through cutting through the noise, through cutting through the apathy. For me, art is a way to communicate, to express, and hopefully to tap into as we deal with these immense topics like climate change. I am Munir from Indonesia. I'm an artist and activist. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm speak little, little speaking English. Hi, uh, my name is Ellie and I coordinate Green Arts Oxfordshire Network, which is a network of artists and cultural organisations based in Oxford um, who want to get together to tackle the climate crisis. I have a background in the arts, working in theatre and in fine art, and um, I was drawn to the climate crisis and climate activism because um, I feel like it's uh, pretty all consuming <laughs> at the moment. Um, I feel like it's an important way to use the skill set that we have. So yeah, I feel like cultural leaders have a huge part to play in advocating for climate, social and racial justice. Um, all justice is climate justice. You can't have one without the other. Um, and I feel like we can lead the way through the work that we create as well as how we create it. We can influence cultural change and with that policy change. And Do you think a redefinition of what contributes an art is required? Uh, artists' interest in social activities as old as art itself. Uh, the first time a caveman painted a bison on a cave wall was an expression either of hunger <laughs> or interest <laughs> or curiosity uh, or let's get the tribe together to go out and hunt. So, because climate change is a type of issue that can completely annihilate the planet. <laughs> so when you're dealing with an issue of that magnitude, what, what uh, Tim Morton, the philosopher, calls hyper objects, you have a different class of problem altogether because it takes people tremendous amount of insight, intelligence, imagination to just grapple with the subject. Know what your thing is, do it excellently. And then the second thing I would say is there's art and then there's entertainment. And if we're honest, people are, where are people putting both their money and their attention? It's in, it's in entertainment, it's in entertaining forms of art, things that they find, um, you know, to be enjoyable to consume. So, you know, what effort can we make as, as, as artists to, to do what we're best at and engage people on the topic? Because as Robert says, it can, it, when, if you, tell, you scratch the surface of climate change and you, and you think, and it, it's like, as the Future of Humanity Institute would say, it's, but, you know, he says uh, it potentially, you know, uh, game ending um, topic. Um, how can you get people to sit with that, in my case, in theatre for over an hour? Um, so, you know, how can we make that entertaining? And, you know, I'm curious to hear what, what, what the others think. Um, I, I don't know what mediums Manir works exactly in. Uh, I'll try to read what Munir wrote. Okay. We From me to anyone who should be responsible for the disasters that hit this earth, me, you, them, or all the inhabitants of this earth. The climate change that hit the earth is not a coincidence or a miracle that suddenly happens. It all happens on the basis of plans. 
made by a few humans, scientists, financiers, military, and artists, all contribute to the image. Therefore, I believe that my works have the value of a sign of resistance from the injustice conditions of the times, resistance of the form of perfections, resistance to the absurdity of meaning, and resistance to comfort. I'll settle my love. Um, I'll settle my love. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Thanks for everyone. My work. Thank of... you for listening. What uh, would you consider the main issues in terms of um, your field of education and the challenges you've encountered to get people in engage into sustainability? I'll say is that uh, on our website we have one particular video from the Philippines, which is simply mind blowing, as to a local group of artists in one of the islands did a, their wave, their human wave, which they tied to a local project about uh, uh, taking plastic out of the sea, which they do locally. And so they tied my project or our project to their particular project. We have to make it simple. And you know what? We have to make it fun. Well, number one, let's not make a two and a half hour long musical like they do in the West End. That's really hard to put on and really hard to get an audience's attention on climate change. So let's make it under an hour long. And number two, let's not need to have an orchestra in the pit. And not, not only do, that do you have to tour them around everywhere, but most high schools don't have that music capability. But what they have is some really talented vocalists. And especially when you bring in urban music and, 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 and rap and hip hop, like you give them a mic, there's so much talent there. Um, so that's why I am writing a musical that is um, like Hamilton, it raps and sings and like a Bo Burnham special, it slaps and stings, as I say. It's, and also hearing about the 100 events that Ellie's been overseeing in Oxford this week, like clearly these are doable things that people are actually doing. The body understands, the body knows, and the body can accept and even come to some sort of agreement <laughs> with that issue that your mind simply cannot. Engaging artists is, is fairly easy. They're already engaged, the artists that approach us uh, generally. <laughs> so that's not so much the issue. The issue for us is um, engaging with, or the challenge that is, is engaging with um, larger arts organizations or cultural organizations who don't have um, the capacity or the funding to um, create some artwork that responded to that through um, through uh, recycling plastic bags into these banners um, that people just got, like people who never make art um, and some people that do always make art um, got together around a table and with some scissors and plastic bags and we made these banners. My point is, is that there are lots of different ways that you can try and make people um, excited or engaged um, in, in improving and making a better world through, even if that's our own, within our own world and our own little venue. So, because we have to lead through change, it's we definitely as as an art sector, and as an as an industry, we don't have a large carbon emissions compared to other things like agriculture or transport. We really aren't bearing like the we're not carrying the weight of carbon emissions by any means. But we are cultural leaders, and we do inspire, and we have to lead by change and example ourselves. It's an infrastructure bill that Joe Biden managed to pass that is gonna to start to look at these things. Everyone has to be an artist. Otherwise, I don't think the future will be too bright. Well, there is a, I just wanna talk about California for briefly because it is the fifth biggest economy in the world. It is to Ellie's point, the cultural powerhouse of the world and it's churning out. Um, and this, this, in the 20th century, this was Hollywood, but in the 21st century, this is social media. And one of the largest companies has just rebranded to be it's the name to be Meta, Metaverse being their interstellar solution. They, they, they believe that an enhanced form of what we're doing now in Zoom will be the, the interstellar second universe where everything can be all right. Now, not only is this a, a massive con and we'll probably never see fruition, it and other associated utopic technological projects could also massively cut the time we have to fight climate change 
because what they almost all have in common are extremely high uses of electricity, VR, and blockchain technologies both have in common extremely high electricity usage. And to Ellie's point, these are things that can basically be out of sight, out of mind. For organizations like them, they can put on a creative front and they do in their advertising, but out in Kazakhstan or China, there's massive amounts of coal being burned to, to fuel this. And then for artists, I think it's do no evil. Yes, we are currently like not a major industry emitting, but like when the opportunities arise as they will to explore new technologies, if they are potentially going to be massively carbon, don't do it. Like if you're going to do your carbon, like your climate music, uh, your climate song, don't mint an NFT about it. It's, I know it's, it's not nice news for every artist to hear because, because these technologies are, are a potential economic solution, which is why I'm really glad that Robert brought it up. But this is, this is the message of my musical primarily is what will artists do and environmental activists if the way that they get their message out digitally becomes a problem for the very message of, of climate justice? Um, even if you're not interested in these specific technologies, just ask yourself the more general question Ellie just asked which is, are the are artists or influencers who are telling you a, a message living their own message? We can change little things on our day, in our daily life. It's those little habits that we change that can help change the world and everybody coming together towards that. Well, on this note, thank you so much.